me here and we'll get started. All right, so everybody, happy May Day and happy Saturday to everybody. Welcome to our first ever virtual May Day tea celebrations. My name is Nicole Riley. I work in the Advancement Office here at Rockford University as the Director of Alumni Engagement and Philanthropic Strategies. And I am thrilled to welcome you here today. I do have my tea. Um, it may not be as fancy as if we were in person um, at the University Club, but I just want you to all know how fortunate I feel to be here um, with you all today. So our May Day celebrations, as you know, were unfortunately interrupted last year by COVID, but we thought it was important to get together in this different format this year to still celebrate with you all and to share more about how May Day traditions have evolved at Rockford over the years. So I know that I am excited to learn more about these traditions and hear about the experiences of our alumni. So next I will introduce our president, um, President and Mrs. Um, Fulcomer to share a few words and then Joanna Mladic, our university archivist will take it away with her presentation. We'll leave time at the end for questions and some discussions as well. So if you could please save any questions for the end of her presentation. Um, you can also put them in the chat if you don't wanna forget your questions um, and we can uh, reference them at the end as well. And if you need anything throughout the event, please feel free to utilize the chat button at the bottom and I'll be keeping my eye on that. And with that, I would like to introduce our 18th president and his wife, President Dr. Fulcomer and Mrs. Fulcomer. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's so nice to be able to see you. And it's nice that uh, even though we can't uh, be together in person. It's nice that people can join us from all over the country. And I see, uh, I don't know where all of you are, but I know where enough of you are to know that we have several states represented here today as part of our May Day ceremony. Uh, Andrea and I enjoy going to uh, the University Club downtown every year to celebrate May Day and to have tea and special uh, sandwiches and desserts uh, with uh, many of our alumni and uh, but we're glad to be able to join you remotely as well. You know, May Day is a special time for us. We enjoy it. It's one of the events that Andrea and I like to go to together, uh, but we also celebrated May Day um, at our previous school. Uh, so we've been part of May Day celebrations uh, for our entire adult lives. Uh, Andrea, in fact, was a, a Maypole dancer. Um, behind me uh, was a picture of of, from 1894, it was a picture of the, from the old campus of the Maypole dance, but unfortunately it fell off the wall right before we started. So, uh, but you'll have to imagine a picture from 1894 with the Maypole and, and many, of our, uh, many of our students at that time uh, doing the Maypole dance. But it was, uh, it's a nice tradition uh, and we're glad to be able to celebrate with you today. I have my iced tea here and uh, Andrea has her water, bottle of water. So uh, we're, we're uh, with, with uh, the May Day tea and spirit. I thought I'd just say a few things about the year at Rockford University uh, for those of you who uh, haven't been back in a while. Uh, we had strong enrollment this fall. Uh, despite the uh, pandemic, we had more students than we anticipated uh, join us, uh, both in our undergraduate as well as our graduate programs. Uh, and I think it's a testament to our faculty and staff and the hard work they did to make sure that we could have uh, as much in-person learning as we could um, allow uh, with the uh, social distancing guidelines that were in place. But our faculty and staff have done a great job keeping us open throughout the year. Um, our students have had uh, as good experience as I think of any college student in the country as far as the ability to live on campus and come to campus and participate in campus activities. Uh, yesterday, uh, we capped off our end of our end of the year with uh, a nice celebration outside uh, with masks and social distancing, but we had food trucks and we had games and activities and student organizations put together a very nice event. So uh, we've, we've done as well as we can. We've had a very good year. We're looking forward to commencement in two weeks. In fact, it's two weeks from today, and we'll be doing that outside uh, this year uh, so that we can allow more people to be there. So we'll be uh, having our graduation ceremony outside at the at the stadium, and we're hoping for good weather. So uh, hopefully the weather will be just like it is today in Rockford two weeks from now, although I wouldn't mind a little less wind. Yeah. So uh, it's great to see all of you. It's great to be here. I look forward to hearing what Joanna has to say and look forward to hearing your stories about a May Day. I know that we have several May Queens uh, with us today, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, meet 
uh, our May Queens as we go throughout the event. So I look forward to hearing from those of you who have had that honor in your past. But now I'll turn it over to Joanna Maladic, our uh, university archivist, to talk about the history of May Day. Joanna. Great, thank you, Dr. and Mrs. Fulkmer. Welcome everyone. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Please let me know if you aren't able to see the PowerPoint once I share it. We can see it. Perfect, thank you. Alrighty, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this presentation of the Rockford University May Day Tea. My name is Joanna Maladic, and I am the Electronic Resources Librarian and Archivist here at Rockford University. I'm very happy to be with you and to share more information about the May Day traditions at Rockford University. During the course of today's agenda, we'll talk about the following topics. And as Nicole said, there is time reserved at the end for questions and discussion. And I look forward to hearing all of your stories from the May Day um, celebrations in the past. To start out with some May Day traditions, the first day May Day party was held in 1894 and May Day traditions at Rockford University are well documented beginning with the first yearbook in 1903. The first May Day queen was crowned in 1897. Her name was Hortense Holbrook Spence. And the 1903 yearbook talked about May Day as, quote, everyone days before the May Day goes hunting violets with which to crown the unknown queen and decorate her throne and gown. Early in the afternoon of the day, the students, faculty, and guests assemble in Middle Hall where interest and excitement run high as the votes are cast for the queen. Dressed in a robe of white, her train heavy with the weight of violets carried by two pages, the happy queen is escorted by the tiny crown bearer and her attendant maypole dancers to the place where under a canopy of green foliage, the queen of last May, still wearing the crown of violets, waits upon her throne to crown the new queen, end quote. So May Day always seemed to be a very exciting time on campus and something that students, faculty, and staff look forward to each year. The weather, however, didn't always cooperate. In the 1912 yearbook, students talked about that there was a storm and the May Day celebration had to be moved to Monday. The Queen Ruth Hathaway that year was still crowned despite the rain in John Barnes Hall on old campus. The image on the screen is one of the only images that exists of the first May Day in 1894, Fanny Jackson, class of 1896, is dancing second from the left. Blanche Walker Burpee, class of 1895, is in the center front. And Lydia Robinson, class of 1896, is the right front dancer. The May Day program included a traditional Maypole dance along with other performances. These performances were often Shakespearean in nature as plays. On the right of the slide is Wilma McNess as a court jester in a May Day performance. In 1917, the theme was Robin Hood and Nottingham. Students spent many hours practicing for their roles in the May Day events, and almost all students participated in some way during the May Day celebration. Choreographed dances, especially in the popular dances of the time, were a part of the celebrations. In 1930, dances focused on interpretive folk and clog dancing. By 1962, dancing directed by Jane Poor had a Western theme, and some of the popular dances included the limbo and the aura. In 1958, there was a mother-daughter luncheon held on the lawn of old campus as part of the celebrations. And during the event, economic students presented a fashion show. And on the left of the screen is a photo of this event. So there were very specific qualifications to become May Day Queen. According to the 1932 yearbook, the qualifications which have existed in their present form since 1907 are as follows. First, the May Day Queen must be a member of the senior class, having been at Rockford College four years. Secondly, she must be an all-around Rockford College girl, unconditioned in her academic work, enthusiastic, 
helpful, unselfish, cooperative, dignified, and gracious. Thirdly, the Rockford College May Queen shall be a girl who is tolerant and versatile enough to be able to adjust herself to every group of college mates. Fourthly, she shall be strong enough to have influenced college and student policy in a constructive way. Fifthly, she shall be a girl who is capable of realizing the prodigious responsibility the title of May Queen entails. Lastly, she shall be kind. The students and faculty desire to perpetuate these qualities by voting for one who holds high the ideals of Rockford. By 1972, the description of qualifications was shortened, as you can see on the screen, while still keeping the spirit of the original requirements. <laughs> so I'm hoping that we can share um, with some of our queens who are here and, and talk about their, their celebration. So on May 21st, 1949, Mary Jo Domino Pritz was crowned May Queen. She was crowned by the previous year's queen, Frances Islay with the crown of violets and the previous year's queen received forget-me-nots from the new queen while the college orchestra played Amaryllis. During her tenure at then Rockford College, Mary Jo served as the institution's National Association delegate for two years. And at the time of her crowning served as the president of the Illinois Region NSA. The senior attendants were Martha Miller and Joanne Reese. The court of honor included Irene Artley and Mary Latino from the junior class, Catherine Mann and Elizabeth Southworth from the sophomore class, Dorothy Darrow and Helen Wenzel served as heralds from the freshman class. Two dances were performed by orchestras during the ceremony and the traditional maypole dance was performed by a group of freshman volunteers dressed in pastel colors. Afterwards, there was a reception held on North Campus for the queen and her court. And on the picture, or on the slide are two pictures from those May Day celebrations in 1949. In 1951, uh, Marion Heinrich Mudd was crowned as the Queen of the May. Marion is pictured on the slide with her court, Martha Wilson and Elizabeth Southworth. Fresh, freshman heralds and ladies in waiting included Don Jacks, Mary Weber, Mary Breme, Barbara McKnight, Caroline Worley, and Dorothy Griffith. On May 22nd, 1954, Goldia Dargan Hodgden was crowned May Queen. It was the 57th May Day celebration to be held on campus and the 100th commencement year of the first class in 1854. The May Day Queen pageant was written by Lorena Church, she was class of 1906, and Helen Drew Richardson, who was a faculty member, and was narrated by Vivian V. Chickey, class of 1937. During her senior year, Goldia served as chairman of the College Judicial Commission and was awarded a Fulbright undergraduate scholarship to study at the University of Oslo in Norway after graduation. In 1959, Sylvia Goff was crowned May Queen and 52 former Queens were invited to the festivities along with parents and crew races took place on the Rock River with the day ending with a concert by the college chorus. And on the left of the screen is the May Day program from 1959 and also the queen with her two attendants. May Day in 1960 saw Arlene Muren Kriska crowned as May Day queen. Her attendants included Sandra Olslaw, who is on the left in the picture on the right, and Sue Sherratt, uh, who is on the right in that same picture. And pictured with them is Professor Lucille Blackfan. The flower girls pictured in the photograph on the left were Elizabeth Palm, Kay Deliker, and Cynthia Bates. In 1964, Marilyn Worsted Knorr was crowned May Queen and was the last May Day Queen crowned on old campus in the Dell behind Middle Hall. About 500 spectators assembled for the celebration that included the traditional Maypole and Elizabethan dances, as you can see in the May Day program from 1964. The May Queen from 1902, Hortense Elder Johnson at the age of 82 attended the festivities. And Mary Jo's son, Anthony, and his cousin Thomas were both train bearers for these festivities. 
At the 1965 May Day, Patricia Zell Ramft was crowned May Day Queen at the 68th celebration. She was active in student government as secretary and member of the Judicial Board, and she was also a part of the Women's House Council. Marilyn Worsted Nor, the previous year's May Day Queen, seated in the foreground on the photograph of the left, returned to campus to crown her successor. Betsy Nelson and Linda Tweed were the other two finalists for May Queen that year. Again, about 500 people from the community attended these festivities, and they were the first ones held here on new campus. Music and dances from Poland, the Philippines, Mexico, Germany, Africa, Cuba, England, America, Hawaii, and Israel were featured. And at this celebration, it was noted that all but four of the 68 May Queens were still living, including the first queen in 1897, Hortense Holbrook Spence. Paulette Reddick Turner was crowned May Queen in 1970 by Hortense Elder Johnson, May Queen in 1902. In 1970, she was the oldest living May Queen at this time. The 1969 May Queen, Patricia, Patricia Jones, was unable to attend because she was serving with the Peace Corps in West Africa. Elizabeth Nash and June Foster were the other two finalists for May Queen and served as attendants. Paulette was a resident advisor, member of the Judicial Board, a homecoming queen candidate, and sang with the gospel singers. After the coronation, music students performed the opera Cleopatra. May Day weekend was held May 1st through 2nd in 1971. Janet Peterson was crowned May Queen. The Regent Singers, Orcasis, and the Theater Arts performed, including skits from the 70-71 production's Twelfth Night and Guys and Dolls. Paulette returned to crown her successor, and Georgine, who was May Queen in 1973, was a sophomore student during these celebrations. In 1973, Georgine Spencer was crowned May Queen. Included in the May Day festivities were a talent show with students, faculty, and administrators participating, and a performance by the Dave Remington Big Band. In 1973, May Day festivities were combined with Parents Weekend and were held April 26th through 28th of that year. In 1974, the May Queen and first May King were crowned. The May Queen was Patricia Zimkowiak and Michael Anthony was the May King. In the photograph, Michael is pictured in the middle on the left and Patricia is pictured on the right, closest to the center. May Day crowning was held in the garden in Clark Arts Center and the festivities were again combined with Parents Weekend. On the slide are images of the crowning of Patricia as the May Queen and the ceremony in the garden of Clark Arts. In 1975, Paula Erickson Eggleson and Christopher Del Pra were elected May Queen and May King. Mary Ellen Jacobs in the photograph on the right directed the Maypole dance in Regents Hall. And the two children pictured in the photograph are Barbara and Joseph Gottfried. Terry Sosha designed the cover of the May Day program featured on the left of the slide. And the Chicago Ballet performed twice during this combined May Day and Parents Weekend, May 1st through 4th in 1975. On May 1st, 1976, uh, Susan Tamburini Chuggles and Edward Sanders were crowned May Queen and May King. And during this combined May Day and Parents Weekend, the musical Oklahoma was performed. And at these festivities, five former May Queens including Hortense Elder Johnson, May Queen in 1902, again attended. In 1981, Betsy Bettner Hagel and Chris Kazanecki were crowned May Queen and May King. The Maypole dance was performed by West High School on Burpee Commons, which is the photograph on the left of the slide. There was also a picnic held and the May Day dance took place at the Rockford Women's Club in downtown Rockford. The May Queen from the Centennial in 1947, Jeanette Haskell, crowned the last May Day Queen, Shelley Nelson, at the Sesquicentennial in 1997. The court included Wendy Peet and Dawn Lufkin. The students and members of the Without Shoes Modern Dance Company performed. 
the Maypole dance, and the Regent singers sang traditional May Day songs. On the slide, there is an image of the May Day procession from the 1977 celebration, and there's also an image on the right of Shelley greeting her guests. Thank you very much for your attention this afternoon. I appreciate everyone joining us. At this time, I'd like to open it up to questions and discussion, and please feel free to share your favorite memories of May Day at Rockford. Thank you so much, Joanna. That was fantastic. I learned so much and enjoyed seeing so many pictures of a lot of you on this call. It's amazing. Would anybody like to start off with any questions? Oh, we have one in the chat from Catherine Forsland. Um, why do you think the tradition lasted as long as it did, Joanna? I think, well, I'm guessing many of you have, have an answer to that question, but in doing my research, it seemed that it was very much alive for students, faculty, and staff, and it really brought the whole community together. And they wanted to continue that very family-like atmosphere. And this helped continue that. And that was, that was why it lasted, I think, as long as it did. It was very much a community event, community effort. Do we have any other questions for Joanna? Feel free to put them in the chat. Otherwise, you can also unmute yourself if you'd like to ask a question. One of the questions I was, I was made a queen in 1979. And the year before Michael Anthony was the first king, did that continue having the king into 1997? There was no queen in, or uh, no king, I'm sorry, in 1997, um, but until the tradition ended in the 80s, there was always a May king and queen. Okay. Well, the May king, uh, was that <laughs> Paula? Paula, was that you? It is. Pa you said 79 and you meant to say 75. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, it's 75. So I, I was the first May king in 74, and it was considered... Um, sort of a radical idea because until then it had never been, they never included a man. And uh, I would be asking the same thing. I was curious to see how far it went. And it, it seems to me that it's sort of, the whole tradition has sort of faded out in the past 20 years if 97 was the last May queen. And I was wondering maybe the opposite of Catherine's question, why do you think it's faded away and, and isn't, doesn't happen anymore? And you look fabulous, Paula. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think some of the reasons it faded away was in looking at some of the correspondence and, and student opinions in the student newspapers, they kind of felt that it was no longer something they were interested in and wanted to continue. And they, it, they kind of, because at the tour, it was always a student kind of led event. Um, and there was always a, a planning committee and, and students were, were very involved and they kind of stopped being as involved as they used to be. And so it just kind of faded away from student activities and was no longer something that was continued, unfortunately. I think uh, too that I'm the May Queen from 60. And um, at that time, there was there was so much, I'd say, uh, camaraderie and friendship among all those women. And we, we did some things like we had the uh, middle hall sings a lot. There was always a song leader from the freshman class, sophomore, junior, senior. So each class had its own songs. And there were just little traditions like that, that I think as time went on, the men especially would think it was corny. But at the time, these were things that made Rockford College so special to me is a lot of that personal touch. So I, I, I don't know. And one other thing I wanted to mention, when I came back to uh, crown the May Queen in 1961, I was pregnant and two months before delivering. And they there was no way they were letting me walk in that uh, procession. 
So when it came time to crown the new uh, queen, I had to come in from the side, you know, just kind of waiting on the side and came in because that was a little bit, I mean, I was married. It was, <laughs> everything was, uh, you know, okay, but it was just a little different. Yeah, and and I think even in the 70s there, and, and I think Sue Tamburini and, and of course Michael are on, but in the 70s, there was still a lot of reference to the old campus. There were still a lot of things in transition, even though the move had taken place 10 years earlier. So yeah. I, there were lots of references and, and lots of things that had been done on the old campus that were now done on the new campus. And I could see how that would fade away what, you know, when it, the farther away you got from that that move to the new campus. Right. I think that because it was so small, you, you were just together all the time. You just walk outside and there's somebody right there always. Also, also during that time, I'm Sue K, Sue Sargent. Um, during the time that we were there in the early 70s, middle 70s, they moved the arch doorway onto the new campus. So some of that time we were also celebrating things that had, you know, it was still a reference or a um, history that we were including when we did that. Yeah. I'd love if we have a moment um, just to go through and have everybody, I know we've had a few people introduce themselves as they're asking questions, but just to say your name in your class year, um, you know, what year you were queen um, or king. Um, and then maybe a favorite memory from that time um, that you'd like to share or, or something that was most special to you um, during that time. So um, Arlene, I know you just uh, spoke here, but do you wanna um, maybe start us and I'll go through the tiles here. I'll just announce a name one by one. Well, what was special to me? Is that what you wanna know? That'd be great, yeah. Everything. Actually, the whole experience was special to me because I came from a very big high school. There were, there were 917 people in my graduating class when I graduated from high school. So when I came to Rockford College, sight unseen, um, it was, to me, it was so cozy and home-like. So it was, the, um, I think, the closeness of the people and the friend, friendliness of the, the um, teaching staff, and not only the teaching staff, but even the, the um, you know, Mrs. Lindsay in the mail room or Mrs. Krakonis who worked the switchboard, things like that. It was, it was just the, um, the intimacy of the small campus that really stuck with me all the time. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for being here today. Oh, oh I love it. I miss the tea. <laughs> yes, we can't wait to host again in person. We're really looking forward to that. And I want to say hi to Mary Jo because I usually see her at the tea. Hi, good seeing you. <laughs> yes, wish we were at regular tea again, but yes. this is great that they're doing this. And uh, I was just wanting to remind everyone that Rockford College was the first college in the country to do comprehensive study of the United Nations. Remember, um, those of you, well, there aren't many of you left now since I'm 93, uh, but back then we were the first college in the United States. We did a whole week study at the UN in uh, New York City. And uh, that was quite an accomplishment. Mary Ashby Cheek was president at the time. And Miriam Bevins was her friend. And I think Miriam Bevins initiated and organized the week long event at the United Nations. And it was quite an accomplishment. And uh, well, many wonderful memories from back then. Rockland College was really great, still is. Very proud to have graduated from there. It's good to have you as an alumna and we appreciate you being here. Thanks, Thanks for introducing yourself as well. Let's see who we have next, Goldia. Oh my goodness, I can hardly believe it's been 67 years. Can you believe that? Oh my God. Anyway, um, 
we were very close at that time. And uh, I came from South Carolina in 1950, where I was the other. I came to Rockford College, where I met all the support I could I have. And I was no longer the other. I will remember that forever. I had the support and friendship of everybody on campus, including I remember Hank, who yeah. was the. Um, yeah. uh, do you have anybody else remember Hank? Yeah, he, he was like the custodian who rang the bell yeah, on October. Right. Day. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that was, Hank. Lovely. That was lovely, and um, so yes, um, I, I just remember feeling so valued and so included. And I always tell everybody that Rockford saved my life. And I'm so grateful. That's it. That means so much Thank to you. us. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. And Paula, I have you next. Would you like to add anything? Sure. Well, as class of 75, as Michael reminded me. And I would say it, it, the May Queen, as you all saw in the qualifications, it's someone who's contributed to the school and been active. And so I was very involved in community service. And so I saw that um, being elected May Queen was a, a testimony to the community service that we had conducted in the Rockford community. That's great, thank you. And Susan? Hi, great to be with you all. Oh, which Susan? Which Susan? Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Uh, let's see, Susan Tamarini, would you like to go? And then Susan Kay, would you like to go? Okay. Sure, sure. it's great to Excellent. be with Thank all you. of you and to see some familiar faces. Um, what uh, Arlene mentioned rang a bell. I went to a very large public high school and uh, I fell in love with the intimacy of the relationships um, we had um, at Rockford College, uh, not only with you know fellow students, but um, uh, I still carry with me um, some great memories um, of relationships with some of the professors. And they're, they're just such advocates for, for our learning. Um, I also carry with me a lot of um, stories of a lot of pranks um, <laughs> that we were involved in and, and uh, true confession. One was shimmying up the roof of uh, Fisher Chapel to put a pumpkin on the peak for uh, Halloween. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Um, <laughs> but um, um, one of the uh, in terms of May Day, I, I think the the astounding memory for me was my my May King, Ed Sanders was um, quite a character, and to share that day with him was was a blast, um, and and, um, and just one final just little thread. Um, although um, our daughter did not attend Rockford College, she's just finishing her master's in social work at the Jane Addams School. Okay. And, and that seems to kind of carry the thread of Rockford College through. So i um, proud of her and kind of glad that thread is there. Oh yeah, congratulations, that's fantastic. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Susan. And Susan Kay, would you like to go? Yeah, they would, <clears throat> most people would know me as Susan Sargent, not Kay, um, but I was in the class of 77, so I know a number of the people who became kings and queens. Um, I was on, I was one of the dancers one year, um, not a royal, not royalty, but that was okay, it was fun. Uh, I'm, I lived in New Dorm, which is the big, was a high rise for all four years. And it was nice to have all the people with that were around me and you felt a, much more of a group. Um, and I had friends all over campus. 
And I was an education major, but I was doing theater and I did orchestras. So I got chances to do a variety of things that I might not have gotten to do if I'd gone to a larger campus. I came from a smaller high school and I would have just gotten lost if I went to one of the big universities. So um, it was a good place for me and a good place to get a variety of courses. And it was, I love being there. We're so glad you were here. Thank you for sharing. Uh, oh, one, one thing I remember though, when you lived in New Dorm, you were on the opposite end of the campus from theater arts. And after rehearsals, if it had rained, all the earthworms came out on the sidewalk and you'd have to run through the earthworms. And that was like the creepiest thing, <laughs> trying to tiptoe and get back to the dorm on the other side of campus. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Funny how you remember those certain things, right? Awesome, thanks. Betsy, would you like to go? That's unmute. Oh, sure. I got to say, this just warms my heart to hear all of these wonderful accounts of people's time spent at the university at Rockford College. And it was Rockford College when I attended as well. Um, I was making queen in 1981. And I'll say, hearing all of your accounts also makes me a little bit sad. Because as I mentioned, the tradition was pretty faded and distilled by the time um, I was made a queen. And the festivities were not as grand. And I think at that point, um, maybe people weren't embracing the tradition. And that's why it faded quickly after that as well. Um, nonetheless, that doesn't make the time spent at Rockford College uh, any more diminished, that's for sure. I met um, my husband at Rockford College um, and Rockford. I was very involved in the residence halls. Um, New Dorm was my home as well, all four years. Changed to uh, McGaw Hall, the name did, and I served as RA and residence director there. When I graduated, um, Rockford College actually enabled me to go on to the University of Chicago to enter a joint program to get my MBA and my JD on a Talcott Fellowship. So I was thrilled to be the recipient of that. And I went on then to earn my law degree at Loyola. So I feel like I owe my life, my life partner, everything um, to my transformative four years at Rockford College. And now I serve on the college's board of directors as well. So uh, board of trustees. So I'm. my hope is that we can instill in our students who are there now and campus is largely different because it's not the residential campus, intimate campus that it was when we all attended. But I still think the intimacy of relationships is what sets us above and what we can offer our students. So. So nice to see all of you, that's for sure. Thanks, Betsy, good to see you too. And thanks for sure. all as well. Linda, sure. I'm gonna turn it over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Linda Sandquist. I graduated from Rockford College in 1985. I also met my husband there. And as of March 1st, I have the privilege of serving as the engagement officer in the advancement department and working with Lauren and Nicole. And I have to say, it's been a wonderful two months. And I recognize some of you, Susan, I think you and I just chatted on the phone, Susan Kay, I think you and I just chatted on the phone for a long time yesterday and, and I see Betsy a lot. So it's wonderful to see all of these faces. Um, I was trying to think, so I was there, I started fall of 1981, and I do think that they crowned a May Queen in 82. I don't know if you would have come back to crown that person, Betsy, and I was I, thinking that Bill DeBatty was the king, but I don't remember it after that. I, I know that I wasn't asked. I certainly yeah. would have come back. As, as yeah. I said, it was kind of, and if you notice, even in in the picture of our Chris Kazanecki, who was the king, wasn't even there. The oh. seat was empty. So that's what I mean, that just 
the meaning just yeah. kind of had faded by that point. Yeah, I think, I think that you're sadly. right. And and, and perhaps the connection to the old campus then also, because everyone was certainly enjoying themselves on the new campus. But um, it is wonderful to hear all of these stories and, awesome. and to learn how much the university means yeah. to people. It is, it's every day I come home and I tell my husband stories that I've learned. And, and so thank you all for being such wonderful alumni. Well, I want to mention when I was there, still a women's college. Men uh, didn't become co-ed until the year after I graduated. And that made quite a difference. Yeah. <laughs> we can blame it on the men. Maybe that's why it faded out. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Thanks, Linda. I think that's a good transition, though. We have our Mayday King on the call here, Michael. Hi. I, I have to admit I'm uh, enjoying very much the recollections and and seeing my 70s uh, era co-students, especially the Paul and the two Sue's. And I can attest to Sue Sargent's statement about those earthworms. If it rained in the spring, <laughs> the earthworms were everywhere and you did have to sort of slide around them. Um, the college meant so much to me because I came from a very, very small school um, far away and saw the college sight unseen in the dark on the O'Hare bus. Uh, and yet in the four years I was there, I had an enormous opportunities, not just academically, but socially. Uh, I did help some people learn to speak proper New England English, um, which was one of my tasks while I was there. But I mean, I had a chance to participate in volunteers, activities, student government. I was very busy in the theater, even though I wasn't a, ma a theater major. Sue, I, Sergeant, I remember seeing you scurrying in the backgrounds in the, uh, the, sh the wood shop, you know, backstage during my senior year. Um, so I was very flattered to be the first king. Um, I don't know how they did it before, but uh, my year, you found out you were the king or queen by having a breakfast tray delivered to your dorm room, um, mm -hmm. which <laughs> I woke up at five o'clock in the morning thinking, where's the tray? Am I going to be picked? Uh, but the fact that I've stayed so close and so involved for so long, uh, and I'm really looking forward to my 50th reunion in three years. Um, the college, even though, as, as I said, I'm now far away again, college has meant an enormous, um, it's been an enormous piece of my life and I'm still intimate friends with many, many people uh, who I met at Rockford. And as someone else said, um, I'm eternally grateful for not only what I learned, but who I came away with and was honored to be the first king. Tony, I told Joanna that I had learned and I'm learning a ton today, but yeah, I, I had not known of our Mayday King. So I'm so glad that you're on here and it's great to, to see you today. Thanks, I'm really happy to see everybody. Yeah, thanks, Michael. All right. Whoops, no sound. You're muted, Nicole. Look at that. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> I was just saying we have Marion next, and I'll ask to unmute Marion if you'd like to introduce yourself and share a memory. Let's see. If you're able to click yes for the unmute, accept, or if you press the space bar, that should unmute as well. I, I unmuted, okay? There you go. Perfect. Okay. I'm just thrilled to see Mary Jo Pritz. And before I uh, st thought about answering, I made a long list of the people that Mary Jo and I were at Rockford College with. And I have a very long list of them. And I have a long list of the professors who were there when she and I were there. And, uh, but I don't know if really you wanna take the time to hear any of that. Maybe if we have some time at the end, we can come back around. I'm sure a few will want to stick around and, and catch up. I want to say, well, I do want to say one thing. Yeah. I think we were extremely fortunate to have Mary Ashby Cheek as the president of Rockford College. She was an amazing woman. And she had a name which was very curious because I graduated from the Park School of Buffalo in 1947. And the Park School of Buffalo is in New York. 
And the headmaster of the school was named Marion Adolphus Cheek, spelled C-H-E-E-K. And, and Mary Ashby Cheek was also C-H-E-E-K. And I began to think that these two knew each other and that they had something to do with my going to Rockford College. Uh, and But, but I, I am particularly impressed with Mary Ashby Cheek because uh, she grew up in Kentucky and she uh, uh, graduated from college and she uh, was a very outstanding student. Uh, and she uh, went from being the uh, a, a, a professor at a smaller college until before that she was a dean at a college. Anyway, she had a remarkable record and she was a very creative woman. And she was a person who designed off-campus seminars. And Mary Jo referred to one of them when she talked about going to the United Nations. And I was one of the lucky people who went to one of those seminars at, uh, at the United Nations. And we went out to Lake Success every day and attended sessions of United Nations uh, committees. Anyway, I just felt that Rockford provided these unique and wonderful opportunities. And I am just forever grateful to Mary Ashby Cheek and M. Adolphus Cheek Jr., who I think conspired to help me to go to college. Thanks. So special, so meaningful. Thank you so much for sharing, Marianne. Thank you for having me. Of course. And Paulette? Good evening, everyone. I'm Paulette Turner, class of 1970 from uh, Rockford College. And it's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, Rockford has a very special place in my heart. I actually was from Huntsville, Alabama when I was recruited to go to Rockford. And um, there was able to really meet a lot of people, learn a lot about uh, the world. Uh, I especially remember Integrated Arts. I loved that program because it really exposed us to so much more than I had ever known. And I was a biology major. So it kind of helped me to get outside of, of my um, comfort zone and get into the arts. What I remember about May Day is what I think Michael said was having breakfast delivered to the dorm. And I was so blessed because my parents came to May Day. And so we've got lots of picture. And Joanna, if you want one with me facing the camera, I got it. <laughs> my parents took Thank lots you. of pictures. <laughs> I don't have any and I would love one. <laughs> but you know, the back of my head looked okay too. But uh, it was such um, it was such a blessing and it was such an honor because the one thing I do remember about May Day is that everybody at Rockford College got to vote for the May Queen. And of course that was before we had May Kings. But uh, to be honored that way by the faculty, by the staff, uh, and by the students was such an honor. So thank you so much for doing this. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank and I live so in much. Texas, by the way, just so you guys know. <laughs> How's the weather there today? Oh, it's, it's actually really nice today. It's in the 70s and uh, the rain has passed over. So it's good. Good. It's a great day for May Day then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Paulette. Uh -huh. And let's see, Catherine, would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, you're there. I'm, except I'm not an alum. That's okay if you just like to say hi. And but your mom was? Well, yes. Uh, my mother was um, Jacqueline Silcroft. Forsland from the class of 46. Um, so I'm not sure if she overlapped with any of the um, alumni here, but yeah. I grew up hearing about Rockford College and apparently served cookies at teas that she held for alumni and prospective students in our home, which I don't really remember, but there are some pictures that that's, she claims that's what I'm doing. So 
Um, so I've always kind of known about Rockford College and I um, applied for a job to teach here uh, and came in the fall of 2000. And I teach in uh, the history department. I teach primarily US history, US women's, African-American, but I also teach modern China. I've taught modern Latin America before. So I teach a variety. I was really honored to be appointed the Isabel Ross Abbott Professor of, <clears throat> of History and Women's Studies. So some of you may have had her for history. Okay, yeah. great. I yes, did. that's she wonderful. Did. She was super. <laughs> right. And I loved her. She was great. Oh, wonderful. Yes, I'm very honored to, to hold that. Um, to hold that um, professorship. So, um, and, and I love all this history stuff. Joanna was one of my, you know, one of my best students over the years. And uh, now she's back kind of using history, I think, in a great way to help us all appreciate the, the legacy of Rockford Female Seminary, Rockford College, and now obviously Rockford University, which I think is indicative of, you know, We've changed as, as the world has changed about us and I expect we'll keep doing it, so. And I remember your mother too, and she was- Oh, do you? Yes, I do. She was lovely. Yeah, she, yeah. she those, those years at Rockford College were very important to her as well. And um, I appreciated how much that mattered to her. So it's, it, it's an honor in a lot of ways to be able to teach there. Thanks so much, Catherine, for being here today too. And I recognize we're coming up close on three, but we have a few more um, that I'd like to give the opportunity to share. Um, if you do have to step off due to timing though, um, we understand. And uh, as mentioned, we'll have this recording available. But next, um, Ruth. Ruth Milburn, if you'd like to share or introduce yourself, we'd love to hear if you have any special memories. Well, um, yes, of course. I have, was reminded that I came to Rockford because my aunt, who was a high school counselor uh, in Iowa, was asked to just recommend a place for me to go after I'd finished junior college that would be within easy driving distance or easy busing distance of some member of the family. Mm -hmm. And she thought Rockford College, which of course was then a women's college, uh, she thought Rockford College was the ideal place. Uh, I applied and got wonderful support, economically support, financial support for attending there. And so that's where I went. Wonderful choice for me, uh, wonderful opportunities that, that opened up. This was a year that we had the men's college in operation along with us. And at the end of that period, um, we actually joined together with them to become a unified college. It was of course on the old campus and I have wonderful memories and lots of pictures from the old campus that I do revisit from time to time. Just wanted to update you all a little bit. Um, I'm working again. Um, I've retired twice. I was in the, did I say this, the class of 59. And I'm uh, working again for a nonprofit organization in Houston, Texas where I've lived for a long time now, um, which is still very active in our local communities, trying to assist people through this pandemic. We have a lot of programs that came along because of the pandemic and what our government is doing to try to improve lives for people who were affected by the pandemic. Um, it's been, really wonderful to see that happened and to see it going into effect and to see the effect on the lives of people here. Um, but my principal job for this agency is that I monitor our, high, our Head Start programs. 
So if any of you know anything about Head Start, you can say that um, Rockford College, now Rockford University, is still working in the lives of people who graduated from there to provide for a Head Start for children who are living in areas that are high areas of poverty and making wonderful impacts on them and their families. So that's mainly what I wanted to say this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for making a difference in that way, Ruth. It's great to see you. I know you joined us for one of our virtual events um, last year, I believe. So great to see you. Next, we have Shelly. I know, Shelly, you said your internet connection was kind of in and out. So hopefully connection is good. It's great. Yes, to I'm traveling and I because it's the best place where spotty internet is even a little okay. So sorry if it's a little, a little in and out. But I guess I'm the mate. Last year on May Day, I posted a picture of the event and Vern Sunstead commented and said he was pretty sure I was the last person crowned and that makes me still the May Queen. So that's kind of oh, no. fun to think about. So uh, everything there, I was the student trustee. It was a great time. So the next time you crown a May Queen, I'd love to come back and, and participate. I'd love that. Thanks for doing this today. Thank you, Shelly. So good to see you. Thank you for sharing. And we have two more individuals. So Marilyn Knorr, um, I know your video is not on. If you're interested in sharing, um, please feel free. I'll ask to unmute here. And if you prefer not to, that's totally fine too. All right. And then we do have an individual on the phone that I would like to give the opportunity if you would like to share any memories, um, please feel free as well. All right, I see that Marilyn's on unmute now. So Marilyn, if you did have anything, feel free to add it um, if you'd like. Okay, and did I miss anybody? I wanna make sure I gave everybody a chance. Wonderful. Well, we appreciate everybody joining on today. This has been so nice to hear from all of you and, and to be able to learn more about your experiences and the memories that mean so much to you. Um, Joanne, I'd like to thank you again for your wonderful presentation. Um, it was really, really nice uh, to include those pictures as well of those who joined us today. Um, thank you to Dr. Folklemer and to Andrea as well for joining us. If there are any additional questions, I'll um, give the chance here before we sign off to ask those or if there's anything you'd like to add. I just want to thank you. It's so interesting today. I'm very grateful. Good, we're so glad you enjoyed it. And we look forward to being in touch on when uh, we're back to in-person events. So we'll have information soon for reunion this fall. Um, we're really, really looking forward to that and, and having everybody back um, and having our celebration for both the class years this year and for last year. And then for our May Day um, celebrations next May as well. So if we can ever be of help or assistance in the alumni office, don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to help you um, in any way that we can. So happy May Day, everybody. And thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much. Thank you. Happy Bye. May Day to you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank what you. a delightful afternoon. Thanks. Thank you. Okay.